i hope everyone is fine so let's start with today's class let rest people can join so guys on that day we were discussing about persistence profile so i will continue with that so persistence we discussed there are two types of persistence which are most commonly used one is source address based persistence and one is cookie so we discussed about the lab what is the need of persistence so if anyone ask you what is the persistence so persistence means to direct your client request to the same server during lifetime of our session so that there is no transaction which gets failed so example is to make http stateful simple meaning is to make http stateful so previously http stateless i need to make it stateful that's why we introduced persistence so when we talked about source address based persistence guys in that what we did was so there were traffic which was coming from different different source ip let's say first ip second ip third ip so first traffic was coming and going to this server throughout lifetime of a session so we have seen that we took two client ip and this traffic was going to this server only subsequent requests are also going to the same if there is ip address which gets changed then it will go to the another server so we have seen this on the source address persistence now if i come into cookie based persistence so you will see the difference in cookie based what it will love it will not see in cookie what will happen cookie is just a text file which is stored in your browser so how it will stored in browser you need to understand how it will stored in browser so whenever you close the browser then it will go to the new server if you don't delete the cookies then it will go to the same server let's say this client then this is f5 and this is server so initially when client will initiate a traffic it will initiate a get packet so first of all for cookie persistence you always require http profile that is the first mandatory thing if your virtual server does not have http profile it will not work because http profile works on layer 7 it needs to inspect right it needs to inspect what is coming in request traffic and what is going in response traffic we discussed many time this request and response so first method in cookie is insert if someone ask you what are the cookie insert persistence method first method is cookie insert so in this what will happen is your client traffic will come to f5 f5 will send the traffic to the server now in the response traffic when it comes to f5 guys f5 will create one cookie so this is the cookie it will create and it will insert in http response from the server so it will create the information on which server this client has connected so next time if same client comes in it will check this f5 will check this request oh it is the same client it has written big ip server server 1 then it will send to the same server guys so that is called cookie persistence based on insert mode so when i talk about cookie persistence guide cookie persistence has three modes first mode is insert second mode is rewrite by default most customer does not know what is insert rewrite passive so you need to understand the requirement mostly cookie insert is used in production so generally what i am teaching based on production issues what are the things but first of all guys you need to understand what is difference between source address versus cookie so if you understand this then you will understand persistence 
so source address was working on based on ip layer ip address cookie based persistence works on cookie which is stored in browser simple meaning guys and cookie works on layer 7 that is the another prayer request so cookie persistence method required f5 to read the http data right if i want to read http data what i need i need an http profile simple guys let's simplify everything so why cookie persistence required http profile because f5 needs to read the client data what client is sending what server is sending i want to read this data guys so basically i'm talking about request and response header simple meaning guys so we talked right request and response header how you can check so you will go to again i am showing the last time which i am showing is how you can go so i will delete this i will go to ignoto mode you open cnets.com then you go to more tools developer tool now go to network tab okay just minimize this now i will refresh the page so this is where http request this is a tool to detect what are the headers which are coming in so now i will open this website guys cnets.com i will just double click now if you come across this guys you can see what is the requested url this is where f5 needs an access f5 wants to read what is coming in request header and what is coming in response header from server so this is what it can see if it will talk about cookie then i will show you where the cookie is so can you see this this is our request header it contains your host name what is the user agent and cookie will also will be coming so we will show you where the cookie headers come in so but you need to understand why http profile is needed now let's come into insert method first method so first get request will come then it will send to the server based on load balancing algo simple because f5 does not have a data right whether this is a new request or it is an old request then server will send a response then it will go to f5 f5 will create a cookie like this and it will be inserted on your browser client browser so next time if same client comes in f5 will check this from this it will come to know what is the server where this client is connected then it will send to the same server throughout the life of a session or you can say until you close the browser guys simple guys this is called insert mode so let's do a lab for this lab for cookie insert so that you can understand or you can say cookie persistence so initially when we were doing source address persistence what was happening i was generating request from one windows xp machine and one my machine even i closed the browser nothing was happening okay it was going to the same server based on source ip now you will i will take two machine i have my xp outside machine i will close the browser okay now i will have one my machine which is my machine if config this is my 192.168.1.9 okay first of all let's go to f5 so i will go and log in into gui 192 you can do the lab with me guys that will help you also to grow i will log in 
so first of all where is the cookie persistence profile you want to see you need to go to profiles persistence and this is cookie profile so you go to profile section then persistence and click on cookie so see by default what is the default method default method is cookie insert and what does this expiration mean session cookie until you close the session or until your browser is closed it will keep going to the same server so that that is called expiration date so either you can use this session cookie or you can use the time also deselect this you can say after how much time my cookie should get expired but mostly it depends on session cookie what does it means if i close the browser then it will go to the another server so i will go to my virtual server this is my virtual server 192.168.1.80 let me see if i am able to access it okay let me see if my all servers are up my red server green server now i will go to this first pre request to do a lab for cookie is guys you need to have a virtual server with http profile or a layer 7 profile which i told you right now i will go into my virtual server i will check whether http profile is not if not then you can select http okay guys now i will go to resources now from here previously we were looking over source address now i will select cookie here and update now i will go to stats and clear the stats of my virtual server and i will go to my pools and clear the stats it will not impact your traffic you can do in your production also now guys i will initiate a traffic from my windows xp machine this is my windows xp outshed machine i will open wireshark also to show you what is the cookie and i will go to my browser i will access my request from mozilla and google chrome you will see what is the difference i will say start now i will say 192.168.1.80 i will refresh it okay now i will refresh it it is going to the same server now i will stop the capture now what is my source ip i will go to run and check my source ip ip config 192.168.1.10 so i will search by 1.10 ip dot address it's simple wireshark so i will look over the tcs http traffic so this is my http traffic i will open this i will go to http packet here can you see this this is your request header now you can see now if i take i will what i will do is i will close this now i will refresh my browser and i will take captures again i will refresh refresh now i want to see this is my request traffic i will just enter http 
now i will open this was the request traffic and this is the response traffic now let me open what will happen let's see so this is the response traffic i cannot see cookie value here as of now okay so this is an http traffic now i will go again into this packet and let's see what will happen i want to see where the cookie is stored i will just delete i will open again this packet so cookie should be inserted but right now i can see this but i cannot see cookie inserted packet so i need to search for that i will refresh again get packet now let me open this can you see this guys now cookie is stored in a browser so this is the request traffic which i was showing you so can you see this it is showing which server it is going pool of rgb server so this is what i wanted to show you how f5 will see whether request this client is connecting we are let's say we have a client f5 and a server i wanted to see when next request comes from same client f5 will check this header request header and if it contains the cookie it will send to the same server this is what i want you to show you you can see the pool of rgb server and now guys even my ip address is same now what i will do is i will close the browser okay i will close the wireshark captures also and i will stop this i will close the browser now if i close the browser it should not go to the green server let's see i will un again initiate wired shark start now i will access the page even you can clear the cookies here also go to history you can clear it from your settings also clear private data i will clear my all private data now i will access the page let's see where it is going can you see even my ip address is same but it is going to another server why because now cookie has been deleted so previous record was that previously this client was going to green server but now it will go to the red server but in source address persistence it looks over ip address here it looks over browser cookie so cookies you can you can see different different so cookies you can either see from wireshark so i have initiated the traffic i will refresh the i will just look over http now i will refresh now i will go into this http so this is how you will look so whenever you close the browser guys it will go to the another server now guys this is my uh, one browser from same machine i will open google chrome now let's see what happens in that i will go to google chrome no huh. one ninety two one sixty eight one dot eighty let's see what will happen it was a cookie data red server now if i close it 
it can go to any server 192.168.1.80 red server so it is going to different server now if i close if i delete more tools or i will go to history <clears throat> i will clear the browsing data so cookies i will clear now i will refresh the page so it is going to different servers whenever i am opening closing it is going to the new server see now it goes to red server even you can see from this go to this there will be one cookie stored go open it cookies can you see this from here also you can see how the cookie is stored so cookie is just a normal text file which is stored in your browser and who will give it so you have a client you have f5 you have server so initially client will send to f5 f5 will send to any server now server will send a response and f5 will create one cookie and insert on browser so this is how it is stored this is what you can see so that is how cookie persistence works now if i go to history clear my browsing data and close this if i again access it will change the server see guys now if i go here your data will get change so content is getting change you cannot track here because f5 generally has a mechanism to track it that whether it's going to red you can take a wire shark capture and check it on f5 if you want to see which server it's going you can take a capture anyways i will tell you wire shark capture later on even if i refresh until i close browser guys it will go to the same server now if i access it i will refresh it it will change it because sometimes on browser it can store so that is why sometimes customer says i'm using cookie persistence but still it's going to same server then you can ask them to clear the cookie and check it again okay guys this is how the lab is successful we did not do anything we just went to profile virtual server first we took what is the whether http profile is there or not then we went to resources and just select cookie persistence now guys next topic is there is another method cookie rewrite so what will happen in this case guys i will go with this diagram so in cookie write rewrite what will happen guys your client will initiate first request first request does not have any cookie first request will go to load balancing based on round robin it will choose one server whether it's red green or blue now guys what will happen is server will send one blank cookie in this so that is you don't need to worry you need to ask if you want to use cookie rewrite then you need to ask your server team to configure that way that it should insert blank cookie when it's sending response to f5 so that is called rewrite so in rewrite what will happen is a blank cookie will be sent from a server and f5 will rewrite to its own cookie previously what was happening in insert nothing was coming here f5 was inserting a cookie and stored in browser but in rewrite basically a blank cookie will be set on your server so that is why cookie insert is easier to implement 
because it does not require server team or application team involvement. So if I want to use cookie rewrite, in that case, you need to configure your server in this way so that they can send a blank cookie or a formatted cookie. So that is how, that is why cookie insert is an advantage because it does not require any changes on server side. What will happen? Nothing. Your client requests server, then server is sending response. Here, no cookies sending by server. F5, when sending response to client, it's inserting cookie. That is very, very important. So it will insert how the cookie will be inspected. This is cookie insert. Now, if I talk about guys, cookie rewrite, cookie rewrite means your TCP handshake, that is a initial handshake, then HTTP request with no cookie. This is the first request. Now, there will be HTTP reply. When server will send an HTTP reply, it will send a blank cookie. So blank cookie, you need to ask your server team to configure it. Now, after that, See, when F5 is sending reply to client, it will rewrite cookie. So that's one very, very important. Because you need to track how it works. So that is how it works. So there will be a first request, HTTP request. Then it will send to server. Server will send response, but it has a blank cookie with it. Okay, so that is called blank cookie. Now, when F5 receive a response, F5 will rewrite this cookie. Spool member port and the this cookie. So that is how it's the format. You don't need to remember this. Just need to understand what is the difference between cookie insert, cookie rewrite, and cookie passive. Okay, guys. Now, next, the last topic is cookie passive. Guys, this is very, very important interview question also, which will be asked. What are three types of cookie persistence? So you need to answer insert, rewrite, and passive. So the configuration is same. So when you want to use rewrite, guys, let's say you want to use rewrite, you will go to profile, click persistence. You need to create custom, custom, cookie, you will say persistence type cookie, then you need to change here the type, select on this custom, then cookie passive. So that is how you can use another cookie persistence. Once you finish, so it requires a cookie name. Can you see? It's giving you cookie name. So that cookie name will be given by your server team guys. So let's first discuss about cookie passive. In cookie passive guys, first request, you all know, nothing is inserted. Your client will send the traffic to F5. Now, can you see this? When server is sending a response to F5, server is inserting some special cookie. So in this case, server is sending some special cookie in a formatted way that you don't need to worry. You just need to ask them what should be a cookie name. Then F5 will just send a traffic. It will not insert or rewrite. Whatever he has received from server, 
it will send the same response to the client. So again, a HTTP request come, it will go to the same server based on that cookie. So that is how passive mode mode. Passive mode means whatever is coming from server to F5, F5 will send the same cookie to client. But in insert, what was happening? F5 was inserting something, but server, it was not sending anything. But in rewrite, server was, was sending a blank cookie. And then F5 was rewriting it. But in passive, try to understand. Server is sending a special cookie. F5 will receive it. And then F5 will send the same special cookie to client. So that is why when you in configure cookie passive guys, when I go here, it is asking for cookie name guys. So that is very, very important guys. So in passive mode, big IP will not insert or search for any set cookie header, which I was showing you. It will, whatever it will receive, it will go to another server. That is important guys. When I convert cookie insert in this, you want whatever cookie you want, you can configure it, but it is not necessary. So I will show you. When I go to persistence, cookie. So even if I did not do it, I select update. It did not give me error, but I click cookie passive because cookie passive and cookie read write requires cookie name because that will become from server team. So that is the difference between cookie insert, cookie rewrite and cookie passive. So since lab cannot be done on this, so on cookie passive because we don't have a server team and we don't know how the server is configured as a cookie, but you need to understand how it is. Then you will go to virtual servers, resources, and just change it here. So that is the difference between source address persistence versus cookie persistence. That is how the traffic flows. Now guys, if someone asks you like, there are two or three types of cookies more. So first one you have clear cookie address, source address, cookie positions. We discussed three methods, cookie insert, cookie rewrite and cookie passive. But sometimes they can ask you question that is there any way there, if you see on resistance profile, mostly we don't have much thing on that, but I will show you profiles position. So if you go here, there is one destination address positions also. So source address and destination address positions means there will be cookie based on destination IP. So that is called destination address persistence. If you want, see, most probably you will see most of the time source address and cookie persistence, but there are three more positions which are being used, which I have never seen, but you need to understand. First one is destination address persistence. It is the opposite of source address. That is a simple persistence where it will look over the traffic based on destination IP. So how you will click, just click here, prefix length if you want, same settings, whatever we have configured on source address, the same settings you need to configure in destination address persistence. Nothing different, but it's basically directs your request. Let's say I have a client 
I have F5. I have three servers. So destination address basically direct your request for certain destination IP. Let's say you have a destination IP 10.2.2.30. So destination address will direct your request, whether it's this client, this client, or this client. It will not over look over this, whether it regardless of whichever client made the request, it will request for a certain when it comes from this, it will go to the same server. It looks over destination IP field rather than source address field. So that is called destination address. It looks over destination IP, whichever client is hitting request. It does not matter. So it will direct request for a certain destination IP address to the same server. Okay, guys, and it supports both TCP and UDP. So it will direct your session request to the same server based on destination IP. But source address while requesting request to the same server based on source IP of the packet. So let's say I have a firewall, let's say I have a F5. And then I have a two ISP, ISP one, ISP two. So that is called destination. I want to this traffic, this traffic, this traffic coming from F5. I want always it should go to ATNT. So that is based on destination address. So it will go to the same router in a pull. So you want that all the connection should go to AT&T server, which are on this ISP. And if it is down, then it should go to this server. So that is called destination IP, where you want to forward the traffic based on this IP, destination IP, ISP. So it will use server address rather than client address. In source address based, what was using? It was using client address persistence, source IP. In this, it will use destination IP. So in this, all users will be directed to same pool member based on destination IP. If someone asks you what is the use case, you can say when you want to do load balancing based on ISP on F5. In that case, destination address persistence comes into picture. Even there are some cases where caching servers are used in that also generally it can use, but best example you can say is it will direct the traffic based on IP address of your server. So that is called destination IP based persistence. Now there is one more persistence, which you will come to know, which is called SSL persistence. So I hope everyone knows what is SSL. So SSL uses what thing guys? SSL uses session ID. So it does not track source IP, destination IP, what it will use. How F5 will track the connection of SSL using SSL session ID. So SSL is nothing, but it is a secure socket layer. So I will discuss about SSL in detail next topic. That is very important. How certificates, how key is, but what is SSL persistence? Now, if I go to persistence, there is one SSL persistence. What is it? So SSL positions are nothing, but it will track based on session IDs. Even if your client IP gets changed, it does not track that. It will check your session ID. So whenever SSL, if you take packet capture, they will have session ID number. 
so it will persist let's say we have client then f5 so ssl persistence only can be used with https traffic because it is secure so it will track the session let's say this client hits an f5 on https then there will be one session id which will be tagged so even this ip get change your session id will be same then it will send to the same server so where authentication encryption and decryption whenever ssl offloading is used if you use this ssl persistence that will be advantage so persistence record is created based on session id that is called ssl persistence see in my scenario from last 10 years i have been working i have seen cookie persistence and source address persistence ssl also i have never seen but since it's a part you should know what so people in interview will ask you what is the difference between source address cookie based ssl so you should know what is ssl persistence so guys while why it will helpful guys can someone tell me let's say i have a client i have an f5 i have three servers server 1 server 2 server 3 if i'm using ssl persistence guys and proxy is also coming into picture let's say we were talking about source address persistence cannot be used if proxy is coming into picture so that is why how you will come to know that whether this client because all client if proxy is coming into picture all clients will f5 will treat this as a same ip address are you getting me for f5 ip would be same because it is coming from proxy so in this case what will happen is it will not track anything like it will not come to know which client is hitting traffic so now i will track i want to track even your client is getting ip address change i always there is a net coming into picture your ips are getting changed whether it's a dynamic ip so even when client ip will change it will still recognize what is the session id there will be one session id with this one session id with this one session id with this so even if your client ip is a dynamic or your client has translating ip it's getting netted in that case you can use ssl persistence to track whether this client is going to which server at a moment that is the use case guys so see every term has a use case right you need to understand that thing in important now guys what will happen for everything whether ssl source address cookie you will go to this resources let's say i want to use ssl now update virtual server cn nets so in that case it will track based on ssl but i don't have profiles right so it needs client ssl profile so how it will track the session id so you need an https profile in f5 it is called ssl profile which now i will come it's an important topic whether it's an interview or in production so we will come into this topic next in profile section